Thank you, Madam Chief. Good morning. I'm Tom Smith. I'm pleased to be a member of the steering committee for One Agriculture, One Science. And I want to just spend a just brief moment going over the bylaws which you have in front of you. We're not actually going to go over them, but as Mary mentioned, we want to capture the collective knowledge in this room to make sure that what we're what we're developing is a workable model. And so we're going to ask all of you to, over the next day and a half, take a look at these bylaws. Let me first say uh, what a pleasure it is for me to be here. And uh, Peter, thank you for the hospitality of Infrasat and your fine staff. I also want to thank you for bringing to the attention of those of us from the United States the situation with Australia and <laughs> India and cricket. And I had a chance to speak to my colleagues from the United States at the break and we are going to be drafting a letter to the United States Cricket Association <laughs> expressing our displeasure at the performance of our national team. So you have inspired us, which I think was one of your one of your tasks, and we we'll very much appreciate that. So, but congratulations to Australia and India. We've actually been watching cricket at, uh, at, at, as we have the opportunity. So what I want to do is uh, I just want to briefly bring up these bylaws. which again, you have in front of you, and, and I'm not gonna spend time going through each and every section of the bylaws, but what I wanna do is uh, I wanna be able to point out a couple of key areas uh, re related to the bylaws. Okay, this may be small to read up on the screen, but again, you have those in front of you. So. Let me also put this in a little bit of context. As uh, other speakers have indicated, we've been developing the concept of One Agriculture, One Science now for uh, coming up on a year, I think, in, in June. And what we're trying to do, and we're really at an exciting state or stage of um, this consortium, we're now taking what was and what started out as a big idea, this grand vision of how we can meet the needs of agriculture, education, science education in the next five years, 10 years, 15 years. What does that need to look like? That's a huge challenge. And not only training and education for those of us that are fortunate enough to be able to attend tertiary education, but how do we meet the needs of those that are the users, the farmers, the extension agents, those that are maybe not have the access to what we been able to access. In addition, we're looking to create a system whereby we learn from those users. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased to see Digital Green being represented here and how Digital Green really takes the knowledge contained within the small farmers and captures that knowledge to enhance and contribute to that education. So it needs to be a two-way system. It's not just a top-down to those users, but we need to learn from the, uh, from the users themselves. So what, what we're doing with the bylaws, and really the context of the bylaws, is take this grand vision and operationalize what this grand vision needs to look like, execute. And so you've heard the term, I'm sure, form follows function. We're trying to create an organization which the bylaws provide the foundation for that organization that's going to function for the next 5, 10, 15 years and beyond. So the bylaws are different than policies and procedures. The bylaws really are the, um, the foundational document for the organization. They're going to create the structure for that organization. And it's critical that that structure be created um, in an appropriate way at the very beginning because you certainly don't want to go back and be revising bylaws. So this, this becomes a legal document as we formalize one agriculture, one science. And again, an exciting time to do that. Let me just read briefly the purpose of the, uh, of the organization that you see contained in the bylaws. And that, that purpose is to provide shared access to learning resources, to enable education technology uh, delivery platforms, to enhance capacity development for agricultural professionals, to promote sharing of agricultural curriculum with higher education extension partners, and to enable organizations to expand their impacts and partnerships. In that 
purpose, we've tried to capture everything that we've been discussing. So I'm going to I'm going to ask all of you for your help, and as you begin to look at the bylaws over the next day and a half, make sure that we are indeed capturing the purpose of this organization. As we scroll down, we have then a section on membership. Um, we're proposing who can be a member and what those member responsibilities are. And in the case of one science, one, one agriculture, one science, we are, uh, we've designated three levels of membership. Uh, one that is a full member that we're just calling a member. And that would be the, um, the, the, the largest commitment, commitment of content, commitment of, uh, of staff to this consortium. And that's laid out pretty clearly. But we recognize that not every institution is going to be at a stage that they can make that level of commitment. So we want to, we created a, a second level of membership called an affiliate member. These affiliate members can still vote, but they, we recognize that they're going to have um, less of a, an engagement with this consortium. And so these may be organizations like in the United States, our community college system, or polytechnics, or organizations or other universities that have some level of content con to contribute, but are not quite at the level of that full member. Finally, as was mentioned earlier, um, you know, Carl's here from the private sector, but we really want to see this engaged across sectors and to be all inclusive. So we've created a corporate membership. And just to make sure that we have no um, concerns about influence, the corporate members uh, do not have a vote. They're not voting members, but they're clearly contributing members to the consortium. So we want you to look very carefully at that uh, section of membership. And section three outlines the consortium and member responsibilities in bulleted form. Again, I'm not going to go through these because you can read those, but we want your input directly. We also go through then in Article 3, meetings of members, uh, regular meetings. And let me just go back up because what we're trying to do with this organization is we're trying to, again, create the resources to allow it to operate. And so in Section, um, uh, I'm sorry, in Article 2, you have different levels of that commitment based on dollar amount and also what we're expecting from a staff commitment time. So the Article 3 meetings of members lays out when we would meet, how meetings are conducted, how the voting is conducted, and then in Article 4, taking what has been a steering committee and now formalizing that as a board of directors. And now it becomes a legal entity, it becomes an entity that can, that can function, that can deliver, that institutions can, in essence, um, join and understand that their uh, membership is going to um, be in a formal organization. So Article 4 outlines the board of directors as far as the board size, role, and it's very important to understand that this is non-compensated, uncompensated. So board members are not paid. This is a voluntary um, position that those would uh, take on. We also want to make sure that it is all inclusive. So we are suggesting in the draft that the board is made up of nine members and that four board positions are structured for um, a regional representative. And the regions are large. We've designated Africa as in essence, holding one board position, the Americas as a second board position, Asia as a third, and Europe as a fourth. That leaves five members that are elected at large that can be from anywhere in the world. But we wanted to make sure that we had representation from uh, those key regions that were on the board so you would not have a board made up of representatives just from one area of the world. It also goes through the process of how we take it from what is now a steering committee to, again, a formal board organization.
And then lastly, Article 5 is the committees. So we would have an executive committee with like a um, uh, with really four members of the committee. <coughs> the executive committee would be made up of uh, the chairman, the vice chairman, the secretary, and the treasurer elected from within that board. And then we would have two standing committees at all times. Standing committees are permanent committees. One would be that executive committee. The second would be the finance committee, and the finance committee would have oversight of those finances and a check and balance of those finances. And within the bylaws, the capacity to then name other or to form other committees on an ad hoc basis that would serve and disperse as needed. And then lastly, what I wanted to point out is we thought it was very important to not just have this organization driven by that board of directors and the institutions that are part of it, but to again try to capture the collective knowledge of expertise out there. And so we're proposing to um, have an external advisory board of very high level individuals, like many of you in the room, that can advise the board of this consortium that can take and represent potentially the region that they're from, but also take on a world view. So what I would challenge all of you and ask all of you to do is, um, over the next day and a half, please review these bylaws. You can approach any of us on the steering committee with thoughts, concerns, suggested changes, edits. You can also get that information to uh, delete, and he can compile that for us. But we very much want your collective knowledge and collective input on what we're trying to do. And again, we're at a very exciting point because this document now takes the months of planning that we have uh, undergone and now it operationalizes and makes this consortium become real. <coughs> Changing gears just a little bit, I want to call on Mary again to kind of lead us through this discussion. But another document that you have is a one-page document that starts with common definitions. It has a little graphic in it. Then it has a series of, of questions for, again, all of you to consider. And then we're going to be breaking up this afternoon into groups to address those questions. 